I think we can uh, call back to the applications once we get there. But but yeah, let's okay. let's go to the connection because. Okay. So Richard, can you explain to me how how does one connect the cluster? Yeah. So yesterday we showed the connection using SSH, using the command line like well like this you see here. And this is really the standard way. So the command line is the most powerful thing, and it uses something called SSH, which lets you um, go, well, really connect to anything on the internet. It's one of the most fundamental protocols. These days, there are other alternatives, so different web-based methods like Jupyter or Open On Demand are becoming slightly more common. And there's also things like remote desktop environments, which you can use. But you could say these replace the SSH part, but they don't really replace the command line part, because oftentimes, even after you do this, you end up at the command line when you need to run lots of things. So yeah, so one of the fundamental questions is, do you connect directly, or do you have to connect through some other jump host? But um, I guess most people have figured that out by now, since um, let's see, since most people are connected. Um, so, so are you said? <clears throat> are you basically saying that? Uh, in order to get to a system with an SSH, you need to be able to see the system in. You be, need to be in the same network as, as the system. Right, yeah. So, like for security, many times you aren't allowed to connect directly to the cluster from anywhere on the internet. So, you have to SSH to some other computer and then go to the cluster. Let's see. Um, would you like to demonstrate the SSH? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's try it out. So, okay. so if I have a terminal here open, so how should I proceed? Yeah. So first off, I'd ask, are you on the university network or are you not? Uh, I'm not. You're not. Um, OK. So which host will you connect to in the middle? So there's Kosh, for example. Will you use that? Well, let's try. So. So I need to take SSH, Kosh, Alta F5, right? Yes. So I have a bit of a cheat enabled. I have SSH keys, which are a bit of an advanced subject. So this will automatically let me log in because I mm -hmm. have these keys. But uh, in normal case, I would have to type my password. But in this case, it's a bit right. of a... OK. So am I now in Triton? Yes, or no. So you're on Kosh. So now let's make the next jump to Triton. OK. So is it Triton or is it? Dot alto dot fee. Yeah. OK. Now it asks okay. me for the passphrase for my key. I will type that. Yeah. So this is the SSH. So what's this SSH key? And why should we make one? So these SSH keys are basically like, uh, uh, like I, I gave yesterday this kind of analogy that they're basically a doorman at the hotel. So, so when you go to a hotel, you usually have a doorman. They gave you your key based on your reservation, and you go to, to your room. When you leave the hotel to, well, I don't know, shop around or see the see the sites, you usually give the key to the doorman, and the doorman keeps the key, and then you go do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So the SSH key is a bit of a situ similar situation. So the door, usually you have this kind of a doorman. So you have this SSH agent that keeps hold of the keys. Mm -hmm. And you basically authenticate uh, to that uh, SSH agent when you, let's say, log into your computer. Mm -hmm. So so you, you arrive at the hotel, the doorman recognizes you, and then they will allow you to go to your room whenever you want. So, yeah. so you you don't have to constantly uh, fiddle around with a uh, with a password or a passcode, or if you're like in a hotel with these number locks, number number locks or something like that, you don't have to constantly refer to those. You you can just ask ask the 
doorman to open the door for you. Yeah. So basically, SSH keys are similar kind of situation. So you set up these SSH keys for your devices, for your laptop, and then uh, or, or workstation or whatever. And then you give access in the system, uh, like you you tell mm -hmm. the system that okay, you you are allowed to access with these SSH keys. And then, uh, then you can. After that, you can just go with the SSH key instead of your password. Yeah. So a lot of this, there's more information. If you look at the page, there's this advanced SSH info, and well, you can read more about keys and even how to avoid this middle SSH by configuring the open SSH config file. There's someone in the mm, in HackMD who mentioned comment on the possibility of editor integration. And yeah, there are different programs that can connect directly to SSH. So they can do things like either open the terminal for you, or even some of them copy code to the other end and then will run it and then copy the results back. So it really pays to spend a little bit of time studying about these. But as someone mentioned um, in HackMD already, like if you're allowing your editor to do everything and not connecting yourself, then you sort of lose a lot of the power. Like, does the editor know how to interface with Slurm? Does it know all these data things? So it can make things easy, but you shouldn't stop at that. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, yes, like there, to... there are... Yeah, go right ahead. I was going to say, should we mention vdi.alto.fi and these remote desktop solutions? But maybe yes. we should do what you were going to talk about first. Yeah, I was quickly going to mention that in Windows, you Windows natively doesn't have an SSH, SSH uh, client. So you usually need to install, for example, Putty, uh, that that uh, that is well the most popular SSH client. Uh, some of the advanced features of SSH, such as like X forwarding and and uh, window forwarding and stuff like that, yeah. it doesn't necessarily work that well with with Windows. But uh, well, that's uh, that's life, unfortunately, because the the system is quite heavily tied to Linux. Yeah. But uh, you can work around them. But yeah, yeah, if we want to look at the VDI quickly yeah so so okay. uh, so or, or we could mention mention both Jupyter and VDI at the same yeah. sentence so basically uh, nowadays many people they don't anymore like they don't want to work uh, like separately uh, in their in their laptops let's say to do for example plotting and then do analysis the or the data simulations in in a cluster and 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 use SSH to bridge this gap. So that mm -hmm. that is like the traditional uh, workflow. But nowadays there's there's other possibilities, and the other possibilities usually involve either Jupyter or uh, VDI. So this this might be also uh, the, like the VDI especially is only in Alto. I'm not certain if other other sites have similar systems. Mm -hmm. but it, the the idea there is that you set up some sort of like a virtual machine. Where you can connect to, uh, that is closer to the basically to the actual uh, actual data, uh, actual uh, closer to the actual um, uh, well a cluster. So so in our case, the Jupiter is like basically you can get a Jupiter if you you ever use Jupiter, you can get a Jupiter running on a on a compute node, uh, so that you can you can with a web interface web browser you can basically work with the cluster. Uh, uh, and and the VDI is basically you can set up you can uh, install this uh, VMware Horizon client and connect to this VDI and you will get basically like a window that is a, a window to an operating system like a Ubuntu workstation running uh, in a in a virtual machine and then you can uh, there connect to Triton and do everything so basically if you are using Windows and you feel like the Windows doesn't have the powerful tools you can spin up this kind of a virtual machine and then um, use the Linux tools instead. <laughs> so <laughs> so basically like uh, 
uh, fix fix many of these issues uh, uh, with that. Yeah. And this is this is site specific, or it might depend. Uh, on CSC machines, they have this no desktop set system that you can use to, like, if you want to get like graphical interfaces to CSC uh, stuff. Yeah. So so there are, are many of these tools, and they depend on uh, what the sites have provided. Yeah. So should we wrap up? Is there anything else to talk about connection, or should we wrap up? I think most people have probably done it, or if not, well, it'll probably take longer than we have now. There were a few of these connection exercises if you scroll up a little bit, but I have a feeling most mm. people have done them. Um, mm. Maybe we could have a five minute pause to make sure everyone has time to do yes. this and ask any questions and then yeah yeah i think that's like i could mention a few things uh like in the chat there's uh like yeah now is a good time to solve the connection problems if you have uh because then you're going to like look around and it's good to check that you got, got there so jump host like this question uh, on the chat uh, of what is a jump host so jump host is basically like a usually a like a server or a machine sometimes a virtual machine mm -hmm. or something that is meant for like uh routing ssh mm -hmm. connections so basically like uh like for example in the example uh connection that i did uh, i went through this Kosh machine and that yeah. is basically like a linux server that that is just there for uh being available to the wider network so for security reasons, usually like internal uh, company company stuff is 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 an internal network, and there's only like few very secure servers that are allowed to access the wider internet, or or to be be available to be accessed from the wider internet, mm -hmm. and and those servers are the jump hosts. So basically, you go there's certain places where it's very like you can get in, and then you are in the internal network. So yeah so those are the jump hosts so i see a request for a bit of exercise time because some sites are having issues so maybe mm -hmm. we can do this for 10 minutes i see one comment in hack and is it okay to use screen because of connectivity problems and yes by all means i think that's what many of us do so screen mm -hmm. and tmux are two programs that let you basically keep stuff running on the other side of the computer when even after you disconnect. And in fact, basically all of my work is done by SSHing somewhere and running T screen or Tmux and then opening a text-based editor in there and then disconnecting and reconnecting from wherever I happen to be. Um, and yeah, so the advantages here are I don't need a high quality internet connection to connect, I can resume and I can switch between computers easily. The disadvantage yeah, so... is it's a text-based editor, but well, Emacs is fairly good for that. Yeah, so so basically over here in the in the uh, in in the screen you see uh, in the command line I, I typed screen and it starts this kind of a um, like a, it starts on the background this kind of a process that will not go away if the connection breaks so usually when you take an ssh connection if the connection breaks uh well you you start need to have, start again so basically similar to like if you use uh like a banking like uh use ba banking for like um what's it called well this kind of a like a strong strong in the identification uh usually you have like a timeout or something like if you don't use it for 15 minutes you are, yeah the connection is killed so the ssh works in a similar way that if the connection breaks you change wi-fi or something uh you will like the ter terminal will die but but if you screen for example like here is a screen you can uh, disconnect from it disconnect yeah, and you see that there's like detached detached from uh, mm -hmm. some some screen and then I can attach to it uh, is it like 
Nope. Hmm. Uh, can't remember with the screen. Hmm. I usually use T Max. Screen dash X. I usually use. Was it dash R? Dash X. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see that the the command I previously run, the output is still there. Yeah. I I personally use T Max, which is like this. It gives you this. Uh, you can have multiple of these different windows, and you can split it all the way mm. in, like, where <laughs> yeah. you want. You can do fancy stuff there, but it's it's a bit more like a advanced tool. But yeah. Uh, yeah, we highly recommend you like once you get hold of the command line, like it's first first steps first. But once you feel uh, at home with the command line, usually at some point you get annoyed by some of the features of the command line, and then you start to use these tools to fix those features. So, for example, like uh, losing connectivity or something like that. Yeah. So let's go to a break until the 30 of the hour, which is, well, six minutes. We might bump this up if we get requests from the Zoom people, and we can keep answering stuff via HackMD. Yeah. OK, see you shortly. Welcome back. So um, let's see. Let's do a quick uh, second round of the poll of have you connected to your cluster already? <laughs> Let's see if we get a better, better solution. Or better uh, uh, if everybody has uh, managed to uh, solve their problems. So, so like, like we, uh, we're trying to so uh, show here that the connection isn't that difficult usually. It's just like once you get the SSH uh, like done once, you can do it again and again, and it's it's. It's yeah. more of how do you how do you work one there once you get yeah. there, and it's it that is that can be complicated. Like like there was already a question of whether you should use an editor that just copies stuff there or mm -hmm. or does the SSH for you, and and it's this kind of a you need to find your own workflow, and that is the complicated stuff. Your yeah. connection usually isn't that. Yeah. Uh, okay. If there's still somebody who has problems, uh, yeah. you ask in the in the zoom yeah we basically need to go on